Freeze Frames, a simple stylistic device that evokes old cop shows and old music videos. In narrative film, the freeze frame can be used to introduce a character or draw attention to a key detail. It's most often used to indicate the end of the story, emphasizing either total victory, ambiguity, or certain death. Stanley Kubrick has used the freeze frame a number of times as well, but I think Kubrick's motivations involve more than just the usual concerns over dramatic effect or characterization. In Barry Lyndon, we see the film's protagonist from behind, walking towards a carriage. Upon reaching it, he passes his crutches to the driver when the picture freezes. This is not the final shot of the film, by the way. In 2001 A Space Odyssey, we see an abstract light show, apparently from the point of view of astronaut Dave Bowman, who we then see interspersed four times as a quick freeze frame. In The Shining, we see a freeze frame that isn't obviously functioning as a freeze frame. It almost functions as a special effect depicting Jack's unblinking, frozen, lifeless body. All three examples ask us to consider the idea of time. What is it? How does it function? Is time a real objective thing, an absolute universal constant? Or is it just the way our brains assemble reality? Is time an illusion? Einstein, and many before him, have asserted that it is. In the 5th century BC, Zeno of Elea explained how an arrow in flight isn't actually moving. He argued that at any given instant of time, the arrow is actually at rest. Now this may sound like a bizarre assertion, but 2,500 years later, this idea is clearly demonstrated by the way film and video create the illusion of motion with a succession of static images. The image is moving. And it isn't. Time is passing. And it isn't. The succession of instances are like a reel of film, or a vinyl album, or a DVD, where all moments coexist outside of time. But human consciousness can only experience one moment at a time, like a projector, or a stylus, or a laser. This is similar to a concept in modern physics known as the block universe. The entirety of space-time, all events in the past and the future, coexist in one big block. But we can only experience our universe from moment to moment in one direction through a perceptual illusion we call time. Dave Bowman's three-dimensional consciousness is evolving towards an awareness of higher dimensions. Kubrick is trying to convey a process that the human mind can't possibly comprehend. So how does he do that? Kubrick achieves this through an analogy. Let me explain how this works using a simpler example. In Interstellar, the fourth dimension, which we cannot directly perceive, is represented in the form of a tesseract, a three-dimensional structure that represents four dimensions, a space where you can move around freely through time. Actually, since we're watching a 2D movie, it's a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional analog of the fourth dimension, or something like that. We get a similar suggestion of Dave Bowman's ineffable experience through a different set of metaphors. First, there's the otherworldly Ligeti score. Second, you get the Douglas Trumbull light show. And then the cherry on top, four brief freeze frames of Bowman's face in full freak out. The sudden shift between psychedelic motion and complete stillness suggests a quantum jump from a limited human consciousness to something much more vast. The perception of time and motion butts up against perception outside of time and the illusion of change. Maybe the title Space Odyssey refers to more than just outer space. When trying to figure out how to depict alien intelligence in 2001, Kubrick explained that you can't imagine the unimaginable before finally deciding on the monolith, a simple transcendent design. Throughout the film, he uses many cinematic cues 
to help convey ideas that are beyond our reach. The freeze frames may be a tiny part of this very large work, but I feel they're important. Just imagine if Kubrick intercut the Stargate light effects with shots of Bowman sweating, panting, pushing buttons, screaming, looking amazed. The kind of acting that seeks the audience's empathy. I don't think it would be nearly as effective. It wouldn't suggest a dimensional shift the way the freeze frames seem to, and it's unnecessary for the audience to identify with Dave Bowman on an emotional level. If we're going to Jupiter and beyond the infinite, we'll need to leave behind petty human concerns. Petty human concerns are what Barry Lyndon is all about. Little life dramas juxtaposed against the huge canvas of history, and ultimately the whole of space-time. The freeze frame of Barry entering the carriage could be read as a sort of self-reflexive commentary on the film looking much like an 18th century European painting. After three hours of that, we get a shot of an actual still image. But I think it means something much closer to Dave Bowman's Odyssey in 2001. With his back to the viewer, Barry exits the narrative. The carriage door is almost like a portal. He's not just leaving the story, he's leaving the human illusion of time and motion. He is dead to us, to his society. Yet, he persists as an infinite, unchanging instance of space-time, just like every other event that exists in the block universe. He's possibly as dead as Jack Torrance, apparently killed by freezing temperatures in our three-dimensional world of time and motion. But like Barry, enduring eternally beyond time. I've become slightly uncertain as to whether or not the shot actually is a freeze frame all of which makes the shot even more unsettling. The thought of Jack actually holding that facial expression in real time reminds me of the mannequins in the costume shop in Eyes Wide Shut, which according to legend, included real people holding poses. Still, even if it's not an actual freeze frame, Kubrick clearly made an attempt to emulate one, as the camera is completely static and nothing in the shot appears to move. Regardless of how it was shot, this Jack is essentially like this Jack, who we see frozen in the black and white still photograph at the end of the film. He has always been here. Just like you and me, and all of us here in the block universe. Kubrick never explained away what his work meant, or what his intentions were. But to me, these few examples seem to jibe with something Albert Einstein wrote. When his friend Michael Besso died in 1955, Einstein wrote a letter of consolation to the grieving family. He said this, Now he has departed from this strange world a little ahead of me. That means nothing. People like us, who believe in physics, know that the distinction between past, present, and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion.